This meeting of the Miami Township Board of Zoning Appeals meeting is started 7 6 57 p.m. My name is Richard Silliman. I'm the chair of the board. I'll let everybody introduce themselves. I'm Amy Aker. Dave Newhart. Eli Hurwitz. Um, I don't know what uh, review of agenda means, but it was fine to me. <coughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't gotta <clears throat> want to change any order of it, so we've got both that. As far yeah. as communications, maybe we could discuss. I didn't have any. I thought that my mic was with two different cases, but I didn't get any communications. So been, oh, is that? <clears throat> right. No letters, no okay. emails, no phone calls. And I did send <clears throat> to the neighbors within 300 feet of those properties. Um, you know, review the minutes from the last meeting, which we don't normally do, but we, we should certainly start. Do you guys have any comments? And, and you got Amy's name? Did yes. Did you do that? Yes. Thank you. And there's a misspelling of my name later on. It's a weird... I'm spelled correctly everywhere, including directly below it. But other than that... Uh, do you want me to make a note of that somewhere? Which I mean, is that? I mean, that's the purpose of going over the minutes, right? Is to correct spelling. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which, uh, oh yeah, is it the very end? Yeah, at the very end. The roll call. right before the vote. It's spelled incorrectly right above it. Horowitz. I mean, um, I would answer. On the sec, was it the second meeting? I guess. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Right above the vote. All right. Or if that's it, we can move on. Did you want to vote on those? Accepting those. I'll, I'll move we accept the minutes with those corrections. I will second two front yards basically and then the frontage is usually uh, if, at least in this code the smaller of the two uh, fronts is the becomes the front yard with the rear being the opposite so in other words the frontage on high road is considered the front yard and the frontage on US 68 is considered the side yard for the purposes of setbacks um, <clears throat> the other thing about this case is, uh, you know, if, if it was in the Ag District, it might be a lot more difficult, but it's in the Residential 1B, which does, as you know, as I put in there, it does allow for these um, smaller lots, but usually it requires that you're tied to either water or sewer. Um, but then I would prefer that they speak to their particular situation as to why they want to do it. But that's why you denied it. I had, I had to deny it yep. based on that, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> based on the code. Would you like to speak on this? On the top? Sure. 
Yeah, uh, I'm Bob, and this is Carrie. We've lived here on the corner of 68 and Hyde since uh, 84. And as we get older, I suppose we uh, imagine that we need a, a, a residence that is flat, that can get a wheelchair around, you know, we all have to face those facts. And so it seemed to us that a reasonable way to solve this problem is in the side of our lot here just to build another house. And so that would mean we'd divide it up into a, a three-acre plot on the left side there and then almost four acres on the pond side. And uh, that's really what prompted all this. And so we would like permission to have a frontage there of only 200 feet um, for the new lot. And then the existing lot where we live would have that on the corner issue. Uh, it would not have 300 feet on Hyde. It would have 194, um, according to the, to the survey that was done. That would leave us 194. So essentially dividing almost 400 feet into two nearly 200 foot sections from ages. So as we understand the, the regulations, we need a variance to allow us to subdivide this and then probably a variance for the corner lot. So we end up with two lots with complying with the acreage requirement for, for um, building on a lot that doesn't have um, sewage or water service. We both lots would comply with that easily, but the thing, one thing that doesn't comply is the frontage on Hyde Road. The, you'll notice that the lot next to us, which um, was these, uh, that subdivision was done quite a long time ago, but the lot directly next to us um, only has 100 foot frontage and then the one next to that one which is on the corner of Enon um, has I think 150 so both of those are um, smaller frontages than is required but those were um, that was subdivided before the regulations were were made um, but it would look in it, those lots it would not really change the neighborhood because we've already got some smaller frontage lots there. I have a, I have a question, or a couple of questions. Um, so it's, it's because of the way the code's written that it, we're looking at the high road frontage because the pond lot looks like it's got, if I'm reading it right, 664 feet on 68. Mm -hmm. right. so it, but it just doesn't count because of the way the code's written? It's considered, um, so basically the way the code's written, there's two front yards. There's two fronts. And so for the purpose of this, for purpose of determining what is the true frontage, it's the lesser of the two, I know. Um, okay. And then, but again, I mean, they would still ha would have to, uh, to, um, comply with the setbacks, even though we consider that a side yard, it's still considered a front on US 68. I know it sounds very confusing, but um, but they're not building anything there anyway because the house is already there. <clears throat> and then with the proposed variance, the house uh, could be located, that lot, lot would be light, wide enough to allow the setbacks on both sides. Yeah, I, I drew a picture here and I just think yeah, yeah, that she included it. Um, it and it, if I last question, and your exhibit C, if you had to, you could you could get the frontage by doing that strange L. Right. Right. That's what we, I originally talked to them about, was I thought, oh, you could do that based on that strange yeah. wave. But then, that leaves 94 feet. Uh, 
for the but there's already a structure on that yeah. property would that make it would that they, mean they could no longer they couldn't no, they split could, that way because they could still split it it would, be, it would be basically just this if this is the whole property and this is hit the, where their house is you literally if, if it's 90 you it would be like this so exhibit c I mean, is you get legal. that 300 feet you can but then you're but then that's not conforming to so if they went all the way to the 268 and it, it their new address was um what is your address 150 One, 150 route 68 would that make it legal like so there would be no frontage on on either? i mean that, that that is a possibility yes i mean but then you're talking about safety issues with um they have a driveway entrance off of 68 mm -hmm. but that would be concerning. But it does yeah, seem like yeah, yeah. it does seem like I there's an argument that if it could be force fit, then why not right. give a variance to make it fit fit right. in, a, in, a, in a better way than maybe force fit? Um. Um, right. Yeah. You would have to go all the way out to the edge. You couldn't do it any other way. If you wanted to make it conforming, you'd have to go all the way. To the edge, and I we kind of talked about that, and they said they still wanted to at least come to you and yeah. plead their case for well, making it this. Yeah, point. and I was I my point was just that if why, why force that what looks like it's sort of an aberration to make that to make it cut that way when we grant a variance and get to the same point. <laughs> And I think that speaks directly to this rule in, in variances, whereby such strict application will result in practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship. I agree. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that's a... Um, is there a reason that we have 300 foot of far edge yeah, as a requirement? Because so we know what that purpose is. I, I, I uh, understand the three acres on a, yeah. on a non-service plot, but I don't know the history of 300. I don't know the history either. Um, I think so. by, I mean people, property rights, have certain property rights, so you can't just flat out say they can't do it at all, have a lot split. So I, so somebody came up with that magic number right. of 300 feet and three acres, <clears throat> which, you know, is not ideal either because you could just see that all along mm -hmm. the road. Mm -hmm. um, but. I guess then that's the next question is like what, what kind of other situations like this are there in Green County that are Miami Township that we'd have to be aware of that would, I mean, this, seems so totally reasonable I, I, mm -hmm. it doesn't but like what what's the what's the harm the yeah what, what's the harm well and one of the things that um i discussed with the zoning commission that um deandra navratro navratro don't need to put your name from a green county regional planning a few years ago talked about accessory dwelling units and she did I, mentioned it to the Zoning Commission and she did send them some information about that which might actually prevent these 300 feet lots being divided in the future right. somewhere. Oh, where you could add a, a, how, a home as, an a, as an accessory dwelling unit. Dwelling. Okay. And then the way you do that is you tie it into the existing utilities from the primary dwelling. And then it's just, you know, it provides income for Farmers, uh, it uh, raises the value a of the property. Family. It's, it can't be. It, it, I mean, I I can't build a house on my property and call it a house, right? Because then I'm, I'm no longer a single residence like that. That's the type. But of but you could build a house if it's but it would be accessory to the primary. So the code would have to be changed. Right. Yeah, which the zoning commission will look into that. Um, that that baton will be passed to the new zoning inspector when we hire that person. Um, but uh, that would be a way. I mean, one of the things that Brian Corey from the zoning commission said would be interesting if they had any statistics on that. If people would not have subdivided their lot, if they could have built a mother-in-law suite, or they could have built something else on their property. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but it's just not in the code yet. I, I did just looking through the requirements for a variance. Uh, it seems like we we can find them here. Mm -hmm. The practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship. Um, you know the conditions and circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land, and I think mm -hmm. that being having such a long frontage on 68 is a little unusual, uh, and not not getting credit for that. <laughs> Um, I think property rights, I mean, this yeah. is totally down with that. And applicants not at fault, they didn't do anything to cause that situation, no special privilege. Harmony with the locality. In harmony with the locality, mm -hmm. we've already talked about the other. Mm -hmm. I'm in agreement. Would somebody like to make a motion? I move that we um, have a um, Correct variance. Can you second that? It might be helpful, Mom. We just have say. A reason. Um, would it be. I don't know if that's required. We think that the, the strict application of the zoning code would result in practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship to the property owners. Can you say that first part again? Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got to be, I'm reading it, yeah, but um, it would, um, the strict application of the zoning code would, in this circumstance, would result in practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship to the landowner. Deprive the owner of the reasonable use of the land. I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Which part? So uh, is this, being, this is, you've got this being recorded, but we need to get it nailed sure, down. Sure, sure. So the strict application. Where the strict application would result in practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship that would deprive the landowner of the reasonable use of the land or building. So I have the strict, the strict application would result in practical difficulty and unnecessary hardship to That would to deprive the, yeah, strict application would result in practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship that would deprive the landowner of the reasonable use of the land or building involved. Okay. All right, I've got it all. So, and, and that each of the other uh, conditions listed in the code are satisfied for granting a variance. result in practical difficulty, unnecessary hardship, that would deprive the landowner reasonable use of the land. Each of the other conditions were satisfied. And the, and the basic motion, right, is that we're, we would grant the variance because of, for those reasons. Okay. And who's moving on that? I moved it. Amy seconded it. Okay. All right. I vote yes to Amy. Yes. Eli. Yes. David. Yes. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's painful to watch. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask what is the next step? 
step that we go to? Um, you need to get a surveyor and pay to get a survey done. But you need to make sure that um, you that it stick with what they approved tonight, which was right. what you plot, plotted out. Right. And then once you do that survey, I mean, it has to be signed off by the zoning person here. I think it has to be. I need to check on that. It has to be signed off by Green County Regional Planning, maybe. I, I will look into that and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Thank A survey you. of the new lot. Basically, you're you're splitting the lot now. You've gotten approved. The variance has been approved, so I can issue you a zoning permit once you've brought me the survey for your single family or whatever you're going to do. But then I think there's some other things like soil and water conservation or soil and water. A Green County needs to look at the property too and provide some kind of testing to make sure that the you can do it the works. yeah. yeah the septic and water. Okay, do, do we get like a piece of paper that says the variance was granted? Yes, what? I will send you a letter. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. and then we use that with the survey. Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, this, if the, you have the surveyor, you can contact me as well and talk to me about it. Oh, want. great, okay. But, okay, but I will get back with you on the ins and outs of what you need to do next step. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, get old now. <laughs> You've got time. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to hear. Bye. Good night. Do you want to do this It doesn't matter. They'll find their way. Oh, yeah. All right, we've got uh, hearing number two. Yes, so um, from Faith Morgan has applied for a variance seeking relief from 4.6 street frontage required for a dwelling on a public street. Um, and that's really all we're here about uh, is the fact that this is a private road and not a public street. Uh, I, did put, I did luckily find some historical data where it's been granted in the past. Uh, so, but she has the frontage, she has, the only, the only concern I had was the, what had been a primary dwelling on the property that's abandoned, um, she has indicated though that she was, she would use it as a garage or storage shed or something, I can't recall. Yeah, studio. Mm -hmm. Yes, but not, um, but. It'll never be lived in again, it doesn't have a foundation, it was built probably before the turn of the century, the last century, and it's. You know, the main part is solid, but it could be used as a barn, but it's not a dwelling. Could be used as a dwelling. Yeah. But you're going to use it as a studio? Pardon? You're I'm going sorry, to use, my hearing's not You're going to use it as a studio? No, it, it really, um, we looked into what it would take, we had Chris Glazer come and look at it carefully, what it would take to make it um, really usable. And, um, you know, so, because it's not really insulated, it's really quite um, a lot of, you know, rot and stuff. It's, you know, it's had varmints in it, raccoons, and, uh, you know, about forty to 60,000 to get it usable. And we didn't think it was worth it. That was just somebody's estimate. It would probably take more. So you'll be using it for what purpose? You said well, as a barn. Well, that was just use it as a barn. You just use it, you know, just to store that it. You know. Was there something in here about getting torn down? Well, it it probably should be torn down. There are two. There are, I don't know. There are two um, structures on the property. Um, it was owned. The property nine acres was owned by Valeska and Linda Appleberry, and uh, Valeska had a permit for a double wide trailer that she used as a Montessori school for many years. And then it was used for some other things like a bakery and stuff. That was the Yellow Springs Bakery, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't I wasn't here in Yellow Springs at the time, but I gathered yeah, it was used as a bakery. I worked then. And uh, but um, I worked at it when it was in Dayton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I thought originally when we were before we were buying the property that the, that might be a building that could be saved, but it 
I had uh, somebody who knew something about this said the um, ironwork underneath it had rotted to the point where it wasn't worth it, you know, fixing. Um, so I tend to think that neither of that one should go completely and the other might just be a barn. I don't think I'd want to fix it up into a studio or a studio apartment or, you know. And, and so you wouldn't have an issue if we conditioned the uh, variance on not converting it back into a dwelling? Absolutely, right. Yeah. No problem with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what, what the demo had to do with, um, they didn't think, uh, when I talked with the Green County Prosecutor's Office, actually call up, she didn't think that you could make that a permissible condition to demo, but you could make it a permissible condition to not ever be used as a dwelling. Oh, I see. That's what it was. Is that necessary? You have to do it on both. I guess, I mean, it, I, I mean it, only because, it, I mean, the, I mean, it, it just becomes, I don't know, one more condition that we don't necessarily have to to, to place on it. It's well, not, well, it makes it very clean, though. Yeah. You know, it, 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 you know, it, it just, yeah. This is not one of the because they're not going to be two dwellings. Two houses, two dwellings on this right. property. So that just defines it. Will it? And, and it's not a hardship on the owner because she's already said. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not, I'm not oh. quite hearing what you're saying. Um, sorry. I'm saying, well, Eli, did you hear Eli? Eli goes talk. Yeah. 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 Loud Eli, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, I was just saying if you place a condition, if we include a, a condition, it just makes it very clean because mm -hmm. you're not. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it putting just a condition it on it, I mean, what if I sell the property, it's nice to have the condition on it that that can't be used as a dwelling. There you go. If that's the condition, I think that's appropriate. Okay. It works for me. And I don't know if we need a condition for the other structure, that double wide it's, trailer that needs would to be, be removed. It's just, you know, it's an eyesore right at the moment, and right now we're using it for storage, and we might have, well, the construction's going on, but I think it just needs to go. Okay, so but we might still want to put a condition on that to say that can't be a dwelling, you know, be sure. a dwelling that would be in the fine future, too. Right. And then you can do whatever you want. Yeah. You, know, you can move it or, yeah. Denise, I, I saw you had at least one older letter, I think, from, mm -hmm. from, from George. George. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but any, any sense of why the zoning for the veil wasn't done differently? Because it's, it's sort of its own different yeah. Sort of a. I think my have more information on that than me. Actually, there was a point where the I was not. I was probably pretty young, but my father said that there was a point where they were, whether it was this zoning body, not you guys, but yeah. an earlier set said, ask. You know, we're tired of having you keep in, coming and asking for a variance. We will tell us how many more houses you want to build, and they gave a variance for that number of houses. Oh. And oh. and there's one more left in okay. that. Um, so this wouldn't actually count against that variance. That's either. right. Yeah. Okay. Which I didn't understand that until you said that even that property is not actually in what you call the veil. You, right. That's right. Originally, so Arthur and Lucy Morgan were given. 55 acres and approximately, and they gave this nine acres to their oldest son. And when he sold it to the Appleberries, he put a condition on it that if a family member wanted to buy it, they could. That's how I got it. Okay. But it's not part of the veil okay. anymore. Right. <laughs> Actually, right. pre veil. But it's it's on the road. road. But it's on that road. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's one of the reasons I didn't want to build where the old house was, is that the lane used to just come down to that old house, but now it goes down through the woods below that old house, and you know the headlights and everything. You know, the, mm -hmm. there are eleven homes, and every home has about two cars, and it's like, and it's really close. I thought that would be just a drag to be so close to the road and headlights and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't have any other questions. So the variance would, so there would be how much 
front is we're, we're, what are we actually approving? We're approving the, the front is fine. Everything is fine. It's just the, that road being private instead of public. Right. Oh, that's what you're. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I, I totally see no problem with it at all. I, I do have a. I just have an inherent problem with saying, "Hey, you can't use this structure uh, down the road." I mean, I know she's Faith's not planning on it, but if if, a, if if she sells it to another family and another family puts a hundred grand into this structure. It's it's all and in the end taxes that come back to the village or to the township. Although having having two houses or three houses on a single lot would be that would be that's a different consideration, yeah. and this would all be on one lot. So so I think there is. I mean that's an interesting point mm -hmm. that um, that that house could be renovated if you, somebody wanted to put enough money into it. Right. And. Um, I suspect that anybody would want to get a variance to build something if they were going to do that. But yes, it, it could be. Um, and I would expect, you know, I know that there were, with the schoolhouse, the old schoolhouse here, the um, variance for building it said it, you have to, if you want to do something with it in the future, you have to come back and get another. You know, to the township, whatever. And I would think that could be put on this as well, in a different way of doing it, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that the Funderburgs, when they built their second house on their farm, next to the old farmhouse, the zoning department, you guys, again, it wasn't you guys, <laughs> but um, said they had to divide three acres off so it's not on a, it's on the right. same Bale Lane, but it's, they, um, it actually means that that farm doesn't have any frontage for really. I mean, it's, it, they just, so there are different ways of doing it, I think. Um, I, guess, I guess that, that wording seems more reasonable to me to, to, to members of the township, that, that idea of, if you're going to do something with this in the future, come back and ask for another variance, yeah, as opposed to making it outright. Hey, you can't do, you can't make this a residence ever, because um, there might be a reason that would make sense in the future. Or if we say you can't do this ever, and there's a reason that makes sense, can that then what, be what I was a suggesting variance? was to make the variance the condition be until the zoning code change, unless, unless the zoning code changes, because it could change. Okay. And you could have that accessory dwelling unit, and that would be accessory to the, whatever primary she builds. You okay. just have to tie in the utilities, if that's what they end up doing. Well, I did, I did want to ask whether, because I, people are always asking me, you know, um, because it is nine acres, could I divide it in half, and, and could somebody else purchase um, land and build a, a primary dwelling on it so that... If they have 300 feet of frontage and they got to come for a variance to yeah, the private front. They have to come here and ask. Yeah, they have to come here and ask. Yeah. yeah. But with nine acres, if you've got 600 feet of frontage total, then... Frontage to what, though? To the private road? To the private road. Oh, the, the, uh, yeah. There is, right? I mean, it's like... It's long. It's yeah. like a thousand feet. Yeah. Yeah, I move to what was the wording for this? That, um, that we accept the variance on the. It would be for the same reasons, though, right? The private road, like it would be an undue hardship. And right, right. And we've got it right. And at no fault of the of land, landowner. And, and we certainly have precedent here. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we're not supposed to follow precedent, but. With, with other properties on that road. So I move mean, we approve the variance, and then if you want to add to that a condition, I'm totally down with that. Should I wait and let somebody else move it with the condition? Um, with the condition that the, um, what existing To approve the variance. Uh, Subject to the condition that the, the existing dwellings, or existing structures, not be structures. converted to dwellings. 
unless the, the zoning code permits it at a future date. So if the zoning code doesn't change, but someone else buys this property, can they then come back for a variance? I don't know if you can get a variance to a variance. I, I, have, that's no what I, mean. I have no that's, idea. That's, 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 that's why I'm wondering about the wording of this, or, this condition. Or another, another variance on top of it, I suppose. Um, uh, to, well, I, if, if, if there was some reason it would to, just, to yeah, it would really make, open up a whole can of worms if yeah. you had allowed two primary dwellings on a property. Yeah, you can see that all the if, if she splits the property though, she could, yes. and that that piece yeah. with the parcel with the house on it right. that exists could then be right. given granted a variance to allow it yeah. to be updated, and, and yeah. that that would be within consistent with the code. Right. Yeah, it would be. Consistent. if you actually if you split the lot as a just a clean split i don't know that there need to be a variance for that oh well they would for because the, for of the, the, the road the yeah. but i mean as far as yeah, yeah the, well the a structures different variance yeah. That, yeah yeah so move to approve the variance subject to the condition that the existing dwellings not be used as dwelling units unless the code changes in the future Or how about rather than saying the code changes it, uh, unless permitted by the code in the future, because that would that's good. pick yeah. up the split. Unless instead. permitted by the So I have to ask another question mm -hmm. since I was sitting here and listening to them and listening to you guys. So without splitting that property, could I build an accessory like Grammy unit? No, okay. not right now, but, th but that's what we were talking about. That, that would require a change in the underlying code, our, which we can't do. Got it. The, 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 that's a different board. <laughs> but, but she could build onto the back of her house like a separate bed that her grandmother could live in. Okay. Correct? I mean, I... I, 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 no, that's okay. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't know. I'm not sure what the code says. I mean, it can't be separate. I mean, right. it, yeah. It, it, yes. yeah, okay. But I understand. My mother in law lived in the spare bedroom for quite a few yeah. years. Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. your mother in law yeah. suite. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that, you know, I don't think they would have been here tonight asking for this if they could have done an accessory dwelling. I understand. That, yeah, that was kind of the situation. Yeah. They're thinking they're not going to be able to be in that farmhouse. And, you know, if caregivers could live there if mm -hmm. they age. You know, yes. So the only commission is going to look at it. They thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I, I guess I moved. Move. Um, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> David. Do you have the motion down there? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, what it was to approve the variance subject to the condition that the existing dwelling is not be used as a dwell as dwelling units unless permitted by the zoning code in the future. Okay. It's moved by Eli, seconded by David. The Richard. Yes. Me. Yes. David. Yes. Eli. Yes. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Interesting to be part of. 